in the last video, we saw how we could um, add um, our application from our local computer into Microsoft Azure server. So I'll be sharing my screen now and we'll see where we were. Okay, so I believe you can see my screen. So what we need to do next is to install all the dependencies and the packages. So I'll just run npm install, which will install the dependencies for the server. Um, then we also, we also need to um, install dependencies for the front end, npm install, and this will install the dependencies for the front end. So before this installation gets done, um, let me just give a little bit of explanation on what we are really doing right now. So usually if I was working on my local computer and I wanted to run a full stack application, I would start my um my front end using something like npm starts. Then I would create another terminal and start my back end using something like node index.js or node server.js. Um and but because we are on a cloud-based <coughs> virtual machine, um we need to find a way to create a production build that we can connect to our um to our back end and that's what static files does and i'll be showing us how you can create a static file very very soon the command the simple command that was used for that and you might argue that since we have tools like concurrently node mon and things around that that can allow us to run both front end and back end with a single command. However, those tools, those um, those commands are for development. They are not really for production environment. So let's get started. So let me we've um installed the dependencies for our front end. We've also done that for our back end. So what I will be doing next is I would be going to, I'll be using um, our process manager. Before we get to the process manager, let me just quickly show you what, how we create our static files in our, um, in our server. So let's do sudo um, server, sudo vim server forward slash server.js. Yeah, so from what we have here, we can see that we can see this line. Um, this is where the action happens. So from here, we can see that we are referencing these parts and that part is client build index.html. So we are getting our front end from the back end using this line of code, this segment of code. And there are many ways of building your static files. You can see I commented out some portion of this code up here. If I wanted to use this, uh, if I wanted to create a node environment variable within my terminal window to determine if I am in a in my production code or in my development code, I would use the one up. But because this is just test based, that's why I'm using this. So you can see how straightforward it is. So let me go back. This is to create the static files that is connected to our backend. 
So assuming I wanted to create the build folder from the, so before I start our process manager, let me just show us how we can create the build folder. So if I wanted to create the build folder here, I will run npm run build. And this will create the build folder. And um, if I should list out all the folders here, you can see that there's a build folder here. The only reason why I'm not creating the build folder is because I already transferred it from my computer to my to the server. But assuming I made a change to the front end that would impact this build folder, I would have to rebuild it again. Yeah, so that's how we do that. So let me go back. And now let's try to run our PM2. So PM2 is a process manager. And so far, there are two main uses I see that it does. Number one, it ensures that your server is always running. Number two, it's, um, it has a way of uh, making the performance of the... <laughs> It has a way of making the performance of your system, of your application better. So if you are going on a server that has like three CPUs, what PM2 does is that it um, segregates your code into three clusters, into different clusters based on the amount of CPU that you have. Then it assigns the... Um, the CPU, each of the CPU to each of the clusters. And that makes the performance, the overall performance of your application better. This is quite different from the general load balancing that people use that looks at that routes traffic through the entire server. But over here, we are looking at, this is more code based. So it's more of a modification of the actual application in itself rather than just the entire server routing traffic. And this works at a different layer. It's a security pro uh, procedure also, but it works at a different layer from the normal load balancing that we see everywhere. So without wasting much time, let me just get to it. So if I do not want to make use of clusters, I will just use, I will just run this and I will get what I need to, Get, but because I want to use clusters, even though when I was provisioning this VM, I think I chose the one that have just one CPU. And um, so it really makes no difference if there's a cluster or there is not a cluster. Nevertheless, I would still run it with, um, with that command that is simply telling PM2 that it should determine the number of CPUs that I have in my system, then after the time, the number of CPUs, it should create clusters based on that number. Um, so that's what we are doing here. So let's see. Yeah, command not found. I think it's because I didn't use sudo, I think. Okay, start, start. I didn't, not sudo, it's because of start. I didn't use start. I should put start here. Start server JS. Yeah, so we have it working now. So what we are going to do now is, um. I would, so I want to get the path that needs to be saved. So I will just run PM to start up. PM to start up. And this should give me the paths. Then I will copy this path. I'll copy this path. Copy this part. And I'll paste it here. Yeah, so it's time to save now. So I'll save 
please. PM to say. Uh, hopefully everything works well. Yeah, so with this now, let's hope that I believe our application should run when we use the um let me go back to my browser so that we can get the public IP of the virtual machine. Yeah, so I will copy the public IP for the virtual machine now and see. Let's see if our application will do on. And yes, it's working. So this is our application. All what you see here, they are all from the MongoDB. So I can add um, something. I can add something. I can give it a name. Let's call it um, Frank Lee. That's the name. Let's call the title. This full stack app is running. Okay, this should be a part of the description. So let's say deploy it to our job. So on that, this full stack is running on an Azure virtual machine. Yeah, so we are posting now. Added successfully. So if I should go back to the home and I scroll down, you can see it here. So this is a full stack app, which is running on uh, Microsoft Azure. A few things, you can see there's no SSL. You might want to configure SSL, add a custom domain, and you would have everything working well. Um, so I believe this video has been informative. In our next video, I'm actually going to create um, another tutorial on how you can deploy an app on app service, not a VM now, app service, which is Azure platform as a service platform. Azure platform as a, as a service. So that is a lot more easier than what we are doing here. We'll see how we can do that. Yeah, so I'll be ending this video now. Hopefully it was informative and you've learned something. Have a nice day.